Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, I will take you through how to restrict the Lambda function to serve via function URL to certain IP addresses which are whitelisted while the selected auth type is none. And in case if you are unaware of the function URL feature within the Lambda function, then I have already done a video tutorial on the same and I have shared the link of that video in the video description. Now to implement the functionality to restrict the lambda function to serve the request originating from particular IP addresses, we have to write a simple and small Python function as a part of the lambda function code base. And here, unlike REST API, we cannot control or configure this functionality via resource policy. So we are going to write a function to implement the same that is to restrict the lambda function to serve the request originating from certain IP addresses that are whitelisted. Here as a next step, we are going to create the lambda function from scratch and then we are going to enable the function URL feature which would be followed by the updation of the source code of that particular lambda function. Okay, so now navigate to AWS management console and search for lambda and then navigate to lambda management console. Now once you are within lambda management console, click on functions from the left panel and then click on create function from the top right corner. Now here we need to fill in few details like function name and selecting the runtime. So here I will provide the function name and then I am going to select runtime is python 3.9 and then I will leave rest of the option as it is and click on create function. Now here we have successfully created the lambda function. Now let's click on configuration and click on function URL from the left panel. And then here we are going to click on create function URL. Within auth type we are going to select none. And then click on save. Now here we have successfully configured the function URL. Now if I go ahead and click on this uh, function URL, then I should be able to get the uh, success response that is hello from lambda coming from the said lambda function. Okay. As a next step, we are going to click on code. And over here, we are going to add the functionality to filter out the IP addresses or to validate the origin IP addresses. Okay, so for that I have already pushed the code in one of my repository that is AWS tutorial code and I will provide the link of this uh, script in the video description. So I'm going to copy this code from here. So let me copy this and paste it over here. And then I'm going to save it and click on deploy. Now here we have successfully updated the source code of this lambda function. Now let me quickly take you through this code at the very high level. So within this code from line number 10 to line number 13, we are importing certain modules that we are going to use as a part of this uh, lambda function. On line number 16, we have defined the function that is check underscore IP, which is responsible to validate the origin IP addresses and it will uh, cross check with the whitelisted IP addresses that whether the origin IP address is valid or not and whether we want to serve that particular request or not. So that's basically check underscore IP. And then on line number 31, we have the helper function to define the response that we want to return while anyone or any client is invoking this Lambda function via function URL. And finally, we have Lambda underscore handler on line number 45 and on line number 46, we are fetching the origin IP address of the request from the event. On line number 47, we are fetching the IP range that uh, we are going to define as a part of the environment variable. So it's going to be a list of IP addresses that we want to whitelist. And then on line number 48, we are fetching the method. So is it a get method, post method or delete method or it could be anything, right? So that is something that we are fetching from the event again. Now on line number 50, we are checking if not IP range. So in case if the IP range environment variable is not defined, then it's going to assume that it's the empty list, okay? And if there are no value in the IP range, then we are going to return status code 500 with the message saying unauthorized okay so we are not going to entertain that particular request and then on line number 53 we are invoking or calling the check underscore ip method where it accepts two parameters so the first parameter is ip address so ip address is the origin ip address of the request and then here we have the ip range so ip range is the list of ip addresses that uh, we have whitelisted okay and then it's going to pass on that parameters to check underscore ip method 
Now here within this method, we have uh, one variable or flag that is valid underscore IP and by default that flag is set to false. Okay. Now on line number 18, if we have any CIDR blocks as a part of the whitelisted IP range, then we are going to fetch those CIDR blocks. And then if there are any CIDR blocks mentioned in the IP underscore range environment variable, then we are going to loop through it. And then uh, we are going to check if the said IP address or the origin IP address exists within that range or not. If it exists, then we are going to set this valid underscore IP flag to true. And if this flag is true, then we are going to break this for loop. Okay. And in case if that valid underscore IP is still false, then we are going to check if that particular IP address exists in the IP range or not. If it exists, then we are going to say valid underscore IP flag is true, else it's going to return false. Okay. So this is how uh, it will return the valid underscore IP flag back over here on line number 53. And on line number 55, we are going to check if the valid underscore IP flag is true or false. Okay. If it is false, then we are going to return status code 500 with the message that is unauthorized. And if it is true, then uh, we are going to move on further to line number 58. So here we are checking if the method is get, then we are going to return status code 200 with the message get method invoke. And if the method is post again on line number 61, we are going to check that. And if it is post, then we are going to return status code 200 with the post method invoke. If uh, there is no get or post method involved, then we are simply going to return the default response that is status code 200 invocation successful. So basically this is how the code looks like. So now we have already deployed this code. Now it's time to invoke the function URL. Okay. So I'm going to use Postman for that. So I'm going to copy this function URL and I'm going to open Postman and paste it over here. So if you have noticed that at the moment we have not defined any sort of environment variable or we have not whitelisted any IP address. Okay. So now let's go back to the Postman and say send with the get method. Now here as we know that we have not whitelisted any IP address. So here as you can see as a part of the response we have received status code 500 with the message that is unauthorized. Now let's try with post method as well. I will simply say send and the same response that is status code 500 with the message unauthorized. Now we will go ahead and define the environment variable and we are going to whitelist the IP address. Now let's go back to the Lambda management console and let me copy this environment variable that is IP range and then click on configuration. Click on environment variables from the left panel, say add it. Click on add environment variable as a key. We are going to define IP underscore range and as a part of the value, we are going to define the list of IP addresses or the CIDR block that we want to whitelist. Okay, so in my case, the IP address is this one. So I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. Now here as a part of this environment variable, apart from mentioning or defining the individual IP addresses, you can also define or add uh, any CIDR block if you want to whitelist a range of IP addresses. For now, I'm going to define this IP address and then click on save. Now here we have successfully added or whitelisted the IP address from which I am going to invoke this function URL again. So let me go back to postman and click on send. Now as you can see here it has written status code 200 with the message that is post method invoke. And if I go ahead and change the method to get and then click on send again. Then again it's going to return status code 200 with the message that is get method invoked. Okay. Now here we have successfully added the functionality to whitelist the IP addresses and we have also added the functionality to validate the origin IP address and then uh, decide whether we want to entertain that request or not. Having said that here we also have a few disadvantages. So what are those disadvantages? So even though if the request originate from different IP address which is other than the whitelisted IP address to which we do not want the lambda function to serve. In that case, the Lambda function will get triggered each time as usual and that will incur the execution cost for each unwanted call. Now apart from that, even if the invocation call is valid and it is from the whitelisted IP address, the validation of IP address in the Lambda function will add up to the execution time and so the cost of it as well. It's because it will first validate the origin IP address and then the rest of the execution will take place. So guys, here I would suggest to choose this option wisely based on your requirements. 
So guys, this is how you can add the functionality of uh, IP whitelisting as a part of the function URL within Lambda function. And this is how you can validate the uh, origin IP addresses of the request. Okay. So uh, that's all I wanted to cover as a part of this video. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Thank you.